Hey everyone, this is Ilda and welcome back to Studio Katya's channel. Today I'm going to share with you how to create your own Rainmaker Shaker card inspired by Laura Devallo. When I first saw her creation, I knew I would have to try it out and now she's partnered with MFT to design an actual die to make it easier for creators like us. But since I don't have that die yet, I'm DIYing one with supplies that I already do have and just show you a different way to achieve similar results. I will have the link to Laura's video down below as well as a link to the new MFT die so you can compare and see what works best for you. Here are the Studio Katya supplies I used to create this card. For the background I used the large polka dot stencil to blend out the rainbow. For the clouds I used the sky set borders. For the sun I will be using the fancy circle dies. The negative piece of both these dies is what will create the die for the sun. The Hello Script die comes from the You're So Ranunculus coordinating die set. To stamp out my sentiment on the inside of the card, I use the Aloha stamp set for the Sunshine and My Friend. And the Sending You comes from the A Cup of Thanks stamp set. For embellishments, I use these April crystals and also some Silver Dust seed beads. I forgot to include here the most important die that I used, which comes from the Stitch Border set that will be used to create the Rainmaker interaction interactive element. Here I'm just using the large polka dot stencil and I'm using some painter's tape to attach it to the back of the panel. And then I'm just securing it to my mat so that I have minimal movement while applying my embossing paste. If you don't have the patience for the embossing paste to dry, you could probably skip this step and just use the stencil and apply your color to the uh, background. But I just wanted to show you a different technique of how to add color to the embossing paste. And now I'll just set this aside to dry, which would take about an hour or just leave it out overnight to dry and come back to it the next day. Now that my background is nice and dry, I'm just going to realign the stencil with the dry embossing paste. I'm doing this because I don't want to add ink to the background. I only want to add ink to the embossed areas. By using the stencil, I will keep the background white and it's just another way to add color to the embossing paste without having to blend colors into the embossing paste while it's wet and mixing it and then applying it to the background. This way I feel you'll have more control of the colors plus it's less messier doing it this way. So now all I'm doing is adding one color at a time in rainbow order and I'm starting with picked raspberry rather than using a red color. This is just my preference but you can use whatever colors you like to blend out your rainbow. At this point I'm repositioning the stencil a little bit because I noticed there was a bit of a gap so just make sure you take your time and do your best to line the stencil with the raised uh, embossed areas so that you can get the best results possible. And now I'm just going to add my orange, which is Carved Pumpkin Distress Oxide ink. And then I'm just going to go back and forth, making sure to blend in between both colors so that the transition between colors are gradual. And I'll repeat this process over and over again until I get to the bottom of the background panel. If you're interested in any of the supplies I use today, make sure you check out the links below in the video description. Now it's time to remove the stencil and see the gorgeous reveal. How beautiful is that rainbow background? So at the top of the left hand screen, I've already gone ahead, trimmed my background and adhered it to the card base. I've also die cut two cloud borders using the sky set. Now I'm gonna die cut the sun using the negative pieces from the fancy circle dies. I die cut two pieces, but unfortunately this next part of the video, I must have forgotten to press record. So all I did was sandwich that circle that I had die cut from a vellum and glue them in between the sun rays. This is the die that I'll be using to create the rain making element. It comes from the stitched borders die set. I'm going to run it twice through my die cutting machine as I will need two pieces, one for the top of the card and one for the bottom. And now I'm just going to use my trimmer to cut the piece in half. To begin building the platform for the rain maker element, I'm going to attach a layer of foam tape that I have cut in half to the top and to the bottom of the card background. I'm not going to be creating the rain element across the entire background of the card. I'll just cut the strips to the width that I want the rain element to be. To make it easier for me to see during the threading process, I'm just using a Copic marker and marking every other hole and I will use the colored holes as a guide to thread the needle through. Now to make it even easier to thread through the holes, I'm just going to use my score buddy and score the strips at the quarter inch mark. 
And now just using my fingers, I'm just gonna bend the holes up at the crease of the paper. So now I'm gonna adhere the solid part of the strips to the foam tape, leaving the part where the holes are bent upward. I'm also trying to keep the holes that I've marked lined up across from each other to create straight lines. I guess if you wanted to create angled falling rain, you could place the strips at an angle from each other. Here I have a bead along big eye curved beading needle that I will use to thread on my seed beads. You could do this process without a needle and feed each bead by hand onto your thread but that would take so much longer to do and it also could be frustrating if your eyesight isn't that great. At this point I wasn't sure how to start but in hindsight I would have secured the end of the line to the foam strip first rather than using washi tape to hold the line in place. I also forgot to thread through the first hole before adding on my seed beads but luckily I hadn't gotten too far and I was able to re-thread the line again through the first hole and secure it again with the washi tape. Also as you'll see here in a second you'll probably want to secure the card base to your work surface. This will just make it easier for you to thread. So once you've picked up about 10 to 12 seed beads, you're gonna loop through the opposite marked hole and then down through the next marking on the Rainmaker strip. So I'll just let you watch the process so you understand and see a visual of how I'm looping through and threading on these seed beads. And also just see how I am able to quickly pick up all these seed beads in no time. Way easier than if I had to pick them up one by one and thread them onto the line. This video has been sped up four times, but to give you an idea, the threading itself took less than 10 minutes. And now that I finished threading the last of the seed beads onto my line, I now need to secure the ends and make the line taut. This is why it would have been easier had I secured the thread from the beginning. So now I will just bend down the Rainmaker flaps until I have a nice taut line. Here I'm gently pulling the line and securing it with washi tape until I'm ready to secure the ends. To secure the line in place, I'm just going to use a piece of score tape to cover up the strip of holes, securing the line in position. And then just for good measure, before I cut my thread, I'm just going to bend the end across the foam tape area and then snip off the excess. And I'll repeat the same process to secure the top of the line in place. As you can see, I didn't remove the protective backing from the score tape just because I don't want anything to stick to it. And that's pretty much it for the rain making element of the card. To ensure that the rain falls freely and the mechanism works, you will need to add some space between the top elements of the card and the seed beads. To do that, all you have to do is add another strip of foam tape. This will be the support for the clouds and it will leave enough space for free movement of the beads. Now I'm just gonna show you how I added my glitter to the clouds. Here I'm just using a quickie glue pen and just following the outline and adding a line of glue. Now all I'm doing is sprinkling on some Lawn Fawn Prisma glitter while the glue is still wet, just to add a little bit of sparkle to the clouds. Before adding the clouds to the front of my card, I'm just going to add a few pieces of doubled up foam tape to support some of the areas under the clouds. So here I'm just using a little bit of Studio Katya glue to add my sun to the card front. For the rainbow colored hello, I'm using Copic markers in rainbow order and blending them out over the script hello die from the Yurso Ranunculus set. And I just have it nestled in the negative piece so that it doesn't move around while I color. So here's a little crafty tip for you all. My cover plates for my die cut machine need to be replaced, but I'm trying to stretch them out as long as possible. So what ends up happening is I get these stray little pieces of paper on the edges of the cut. When that happens, I just use a old toothbrush and brush along the die cut and it removes all those little pieces of paper. Now I'm just stacking a couple of Hello die cut pieces that I cut out in white and glued them together with Quickie glue pen as it's such a thin area to apply glue to and then I'm just finishing it off with the top rainbow layer. To add a glossy finish to the top of the Hello die, I'm using the Juicy Pad from Ink on 3 to add a sticky surface and now I'm just going to sprinkle on some crystal clear embossing powder and then just heat set that to create a beautiful gloss finish. To finish off the card front, I'm just going to add the hello to the bottom right corner using some liquid adhesive. And for a little more sparkle and shine, I'm just adding a few of the April crystals. And finally, on the inside of the card, I stamped out Sending You Sunshine, My Friend. 
The Sending You comes from A Cup of Thanks set, and The Sunshine, my friend, comes from the Aloha set from Studio Katya. And that's how I've created my DIY version of the Rainmaker Shaker card, inspired by my friend Laura Devallo. This card took me just a little bit over an hour to complete, not counting drying time for the embossing paste, plus using a needle really helped speed things up. I hope this card has inspired you to look at your dies in a different way and see how else they could be used, as I did here by using a die meant for stitching to create the rain making element. Thank you all for stopping by and spending some time with me today, and for more inspiration from Studio Katya, visit the Studio Katya blog or studiokatya.com. Until next time everyone, happy crafting! Bye!